Hello, welcome to the Real Internet Come Forth YouTube account. My name is Internet Smith and I am your author. <clears throat> Excuse me. Remember to get your books, get your books, get your book, people. They are on sale. Walmart.com, Books A Million, Indigo, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, Google, Apple, iTunes. Now they are on sales. Um, for any of my UK followers, you can get my book in digital version and paperback. Go to Tales and order them, okay? Um, so each book comes with its own bookmark. Remember, each book comes with its own bookmark. The Real Internet Come Forth book series has its own loyalty card. If you buy the first three books, I will give you the fourth book free, which is volume seven, eight, and nine. The Behind the Scene book series also comes with its own loyalty card. It's five separate books. You buy the first four books, I will give you the fifth book free. Remember to send me proof that you purchased the books and I will get your loyalty cards, your bookmarks to you, okay? Don't forget about my new book release, My Jesus Experience, Our Journey. It is on sale as well. It's not on sale, it's available online for $11.95. Um, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, Google, Apple, iTunes, Walmart.com, Indigo. It comes in paperback and digital version. It also comes with a bookmark. Let me know you purchased the book. I will send you your bookmarks. These are so pretty, okay? So you can get this book for $11.95. Okay, so we are still in the Real Internet Come Forth book series. We are in volume number six. This will be the last week we're in volume six, people. Uh, and then we're going to be moving along. We're trying to get through with this Real Internet Come Forth book series the month of April and May, and then June, we're going to start something new, okay? So, all right. We're in volume six, The Breaking of Me, and it is from age 30 to 33. And it is about divorce and children leaving home. Remember, I told you two very, very, very difficult subjects, okay? So, I'm going to do a reading. And it is from Chapter 10, titled Identity Crisis. And this is April of 2007. And it reads, Well, I felt new and I went to work. My co-worker said, I guess you just needed some rest. You look better. I said, yes, I did. I put on my music like always. I played gospel and R&B songs. I listened to sermons from countless pastors I purchased. I was dependent. It, it just depended on the mood I was in, what I listened to. But it was always these three choices. I thought to myself, now, Internet, you don't have a clue what kind of guy you like. Old, young, light, dark, fat, skinny, or what do you like or want? Do you do? So I decided that I would try them all. What the H is not, okay. What the H is not like I am getting married to either of them. This was a new experience for me. No strings attached and no one to answer to. I didn't have to be faithful because I was not committed to nobody. I didn't have to check in with anyone because neither of them would be my man. While I was working, I thought of, I thought I thought about if I do agree to go on a date with one of all of them. I didn't want to appear to be a hoe because it had been 10 months since I had sex and I was really feeling myself. Now I am trying now I, now all the dating and sex of these different guys took place between April till October. I was involved with five at the five guys at the same time and I met a few more along the way before I totally stopped having sex altogether because I had a total meltdown. But here is why here but here were my encounters with each guy. I knew many of I know many of you would have skipped this part of your life story, but not me. This is who I was, and God still had grace to save me and have mercy to keep me. Guy number one. I decided to call an old trusted friend to ask for a favor. Yes, a favor. I called and he answered. I said, Hello, stranger. How are you? He said, Oh, now I'm a stranger. I said, I to some degree you are. He said, what's up, baby? I said, well, I'm at work now, but I need a favor. He said, if I can help you, you know I will. I said, I need to get laid tomorrow. 
He said, what did you say? I said, I need to get laid tomorrow. He said, where's your husband? I said, he left two months ago when I filed for divorce. He said, well, I'm sorry to hear that. Are you okay? How are the children? I said, we better now. It's hard, but he decided to leave us. So that's that. Can you please help me? He said, sure, I can. No problem. I said, what time do you want me to come over? He said, I get off work about two, so four would be fine. He, uh, I said, okay, I'll see you at four. I can't stay long. I got to pick up my children from the Boys and Girls Club at five. He said, okay, baby. So I went to, so I went and he rocked my world and I really felt brand new. He had always been such a gentleman to me, very respectful, but not faithful or consistent. He served his purpose in my life. And if ever I needed to feel or love and love like a lady, he was the first one I would call. I wouldn't deny this. I couldn't deny that this man had love for me and my children. That's the fact. But he couldn't be the one. But he couldn't be with one woman, and that in itself would was would be a deal breaker for me. Um, that in itself I would not deal with from no other man. So for the next few years, he became my go-to guy for sexual attention and a shoulder to cry on whichever came first. We became close friends and had an understanding between each other. Guy number two. The next work, the next night at work, one of the other guys asked me for my number again and I shocked him and said, give me your number and I will call you. How about that? He said, sure thing. And by the way, you beautiful. I love your new haircut. I smile from ear to ear. Thank you very much. He said, enjoy your shift, okay? I said, thank you. I was smiling and still waiting on my customers. Now, allow me to tell you about this guy. OMG. You talk about handsome and smell good. He was 55 years old, divorced, and fine as H. He had taken good care of himself. He was a supervisor for a major company worldwide. So I gave him my number. So I gave him a call after the job for after I gave him a call off the job phone, of course. You look and smell good, but I don't know you. Come to find out he had he was transferred to Mississippi a few years back from his job. He was married 13 years. Also as long as I also, almost as long as I had been alive. He had been married for 30 years. I'm sorry. He was married 30 years, almost as long as I've been alive. But he had four children, all grown. His oldest child is my age. Go figure that. But we became mostly phone buddies. He was my advisor, I called him. He was a huge emotional support for me for the filing of my divorce. He would always call me to read the Bible to me and tell me good night, good morning, and come and see me at work. He came to my house three times while the children were at school to give me a treat. He called me. He called it. So I would get some sleep. He would come make love to me in the middle of the day on three separate occasions, and I would, in fact, go to sleep. I guess because I knew he really cared for me and the condition of my soul and mind, he would always say, you have to keep yourself together for your children. You are all they have. I said, you're right. This was the nature of our relationship. He began to talk to me about what men like and didn't like in a woman. He told me I was very attracted to him and I knew you was attracted to me, but sweetheart, you have a lot of years in front of you. I'm almost 60. You need to live your life, whether it's by yourself or with someone your age. You have not to. You have not even experienced life yet. Yet, yet you have been married. Yes, you have been married and have five children. But the truth be told, that wasn't a real marriage. He was never there. You haven't experienced real love of a mate. And I love you too much to treat you out of your experience and life you deserve. At first, I was like, so you don't want to be with me. You don't like me because something wrong with me. Um, he said, you didn't hear a word I said, did you? Did you hear me say something was wrong with you? I said, no, you didn't. He said, so stop putting words in my mouth. 
What I said was I love you too much to cheat you out of all God has for you. I am about to retire. My children are grown. You are young. Your children are young. You need someone to grow with you in your life. If you choose to either get married again, that's totally up to you. You continue to talk. We continue to talk for the next month and a half until he in, until I ended the calls. He reached out to me on several times after that, but my mind and heart was in a better place, so I didn't need the extra attention anymore. I thank God for him. He kept my mind stayed on Jesus. I'm going to end the chapter right there. I want you to get your books, get your books, so you can finish the story and you can see what happened. Okay, so we just finished up with the value number six, titled The Breaking of Me of the Real Internet Come Forth. Next week, y'all. We are in the final book of this series. This is The Real Internet Come Forth, volume seven, eight, and nine. This is three books in one, y'all. So we are going to be on this book next. Okay, I do not have any questions this week, so send me your questions and I will gladly answer them, okay? Thank you for your continued support of purchasing my products and watching these videos and sharing these videos. And remember, until we meet again, God gets the glory and I tell the story. Goodbye.